Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Dr. Cynthia Red. I wanted to say thank you all for being patient about everything. Right now I'm writing um, what's going to be on the website, so I'm writing now. I did a tutorial, so I'm writing right now. Uh, I paid for a whole year, so that way um, I don't have to worry about the month, the month, the month, the month. So it's paid, and I'll do it again next year. Okay, so I thank you all for being very patient with me and understanding. And I thank God for you all. Let's talk about church, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. That you did um, put in my heart to design the churches. So that we, we may have a congregation of worship toward you. Your house is a house of prayer, praise, and worship. We thank you for our Father in heaven. God of Abraham, God of Israel, known as Jacob, according to the prophet Elisha, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God. We thank you for him. We thank you for the sinner's prayer, Psalms 51, that was put on David's heart that the, the prophet um, Nathan had gone in to talk to him about what he had did with Bathsheba. We thank you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, don't let us be like Israel, study breaking your heart and making you upset about the things that are going on. I ask you, Lord, to send America through repentance. Let us repent. Let us repent. And not let us be so influenced but every new thing that show up that looks shiny to us. Father, let us repent. So today's and repentance is glory unto your name, God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you that he takes us through repentance and through remembrance of what should we, we, we should repent for and that we should be grateful to you that repentance is still open, that gateway is still open. And it'll always be open. And forgiveness is open because I've always said that forgiveness is the children's bread. I started saying when I was hanging out at Crusaders. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. You came to me in class and I started hanging out. Okay, so one of the things we need to talk about is church. Okay. In the natural man. They will say, church is for where those people go to have an experience with God and to meet God. If you want to see God, go to church. They're partially right because we can't forsake prayer, praise, and worship. Now, prayer, praise, and worship exist in the church where we are taught how to pray. Praise and worship God. Now the Holy Ghost sometimes will deal with us individually in our own homes about that. But what we have to understand is that we can't put God in the box. God is all over. God is this all over. Now in... Second Chronicles Chapter Seven. It is when in Chapter Six. Okay, so we're going to go backwards. In the temple of God, God's glory filled the temple where the priest could not enter. In the temple, it was so thick. Okay. God had established that through Solomon, through his father, King David, that wanted to build it for God. And his mother is... Bathsheba. So 
Solomon the son was told that he would build it and not David because David was a man of war. Okay. And God said, I want this place to be about me. Okay. It is a sacred place. So as we go down and look and go backwards after, ch after chapter, because that was said before these chapters, to David, because they were in Chronicles with Solomon and passing everything on to his son. So in seven, God fills the temple. In six, this is when Solomon was completing everything and and he was establishing the temple for God's presence. So in the temple and the tabernacle, we must understand there were sacrifices being made like the peace offering, the burnt offerings for different various different feasts and and if they had to go to war, certain things would happen on the field through the king. And the prophet would have to say that that has to be done. And this you find in the Old Testament all throughout. Now, when you offer a unholy sacrifice, which Aaron, two sons, had done, God killed him for that. Then he punished Aaron for having against him about the killing of his sons because Moses would have took an Aaron out. So this is an example of letting you know that God is everywhere. But we must not forsake the assembly of saints. Okay? We must gather together. So when you look at the church of Sadias, Sadias, and you're looking in Revelations, church number five, there were some people in the sanctuary that not had given over to sin, but was living right according to the statutes that God had established from the Old Testament to the New Testament, which includes everything from then the prophets directly all the way to Jesus, all the way to after Jesus, now the Christ, which is on the right hand of God, and glorified, hallelujah, by the 24, by the 24 elders in glory, which is in the book of Revelations. The reason why I'm saying the general like this to you is because I know for a fact, if I go right now to look for the scripture or go before this to look for the scripture, I know you're not going to read this Bible. Okay, now I read Revelations when I was in the hospital. I read the Gillians. Okay, then I read, you know, so I um, used it for class, the condensed version, because I take a philosophy class for church, because we have a seminary school. Okay, ULC has a seminary school. All right, the original ULC, we have a seminary school. Okay. Now, right in this morning, my headquarters in Modesto, California. That's the headquarters. All right? Everybody started from there. Even if you branched off, everybody started from there. Okay? So, you have to understand, God can. God is in the church. So is Satan to destroy you. And Satan would use the church against me all the time. And so I had to get the revelation that, hey, we must watch as well as pray and pray before we go and be scriptured up before we go and be scriptured up when we in there and be scriptured up when we leave and keep it consistent. Okay, because that is the protection, not just Ephesians, not just Isaiah 54 and 17, but the scripture because it's holy. Now I've noticed that online they've taken out the regular King James to put in the new King James translation. But the new slightly differs from the King James that I have at home. 
how I know when Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not stand against it. Now that was my mama's Bible, which I have not anymore. My mama did and my mama my dad just died in October. My mama would have been in her seventies. So that Bible was pretty old and it had a concrete grasp of closeness as it could, okay? So now what we need to understand the gates of Hades is hell. That's right, hell, okay? Where the devils and his foes are supposed to be, but the devil is locked up somewhere else. But his folk is in hell, okay? So we have to understand there's a glory, which is confessing Lord Jesus as your Savior and following his way. And obeying his commandments and doing what you know to do that the Bible tells us here. See, when we read this word of God right here, the Bible, we are responsible to do all we can to uphold it. Okay? When we make mistakes in speech and trying to communicate with people about the word and how we're supposed to live, that's when the Holy Ghost comes in and teaches us the correct way. And he started teaching us, what lesson have you learned from last time when you went through something? What was that lesson? Okay, don't go through that lesson again because now you know that lesson. And from that lesson, you get better and better and better. So in our natural mindset, even me as a kid, I knew I was outside playing and my mom was walking to church and I said, Mom, can I go with you? Because in my little natural mind, I said, church is where God is. But I didn't know that God was everywhere all the time because I had in my little mind, I had put, when I was a kid, I put God in church. And even as an adult, I just put him in church. But you can't put him in a box. He's everywhere. And he demonstrates it through the Old Testament. I'm everywhere. He demonstrates it when in the New Testament by giving us Jesus Christ, who was crucified, died, and buried. No man come up to the Father but by me. John 14 and 6. Okay? Alright? So, when, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, he that believeth in him shall neither hunger nor thirst, but have ever, he who believeth on him shall have everlasting life. And I would say, neither hunger nor thirst, because it was verbally taught to me that way. Okay, John three sixteen. Let me let me get that. Let me get that because uh, um, a mason told me about John three sixteen because I was doing fourteen fifty one. I was doing John fourteen. That's what I was doing. John fourteen. I mean, doing all my life because that's all I could grasp in 23 that's all I could grasp at the time so now I do more okay here it is Jesus answered and said really really I say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God um I must have I misquoted hold on Hmm. Let me. I made a mistake here. I have to fix this. I'm kind of glad I made it publicly and caught I made a mistake. Then, not admitting I made a mistake.
Okay, 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Okay? Now, let me go back. I can't find that. And now y'all got one on Reverend Cynthia now. So you can't go and say, oh, she made a mistake. No, I'm admitting that I'm making this mistake. And, and I should have went to my Bible and said what I was saying with my Bible scripture study and open. So now I confess that sin I just made, okay? That way we're not going to have people slamming me on YouTube or anywhere else. So I made a mistake today. And so I made a mistake. So, I, I don't um, know how I made the mistake, but I just made it. I misquoted the scripture, and I didn't open my Bible, and I didn't write down any scripture for y'all. I just got up and started talking. That's what I did. And then... I didn't think about nothing. So that is my mistake today. Okay, so when somebody says, oh, Pastor Siki made a mistake of quoting the scripture. Yes, I did. So you can rally on that because a lot of y'all always um. Y'all always rallying on when people make mistakes. So Reverend Cynthia just made hers. Okay. I just made mine right there. So you may say, I'm a false teacher. You Because I'm, I'm finna get it from you guys. You know. But yeah, I made the mistake right here. So, I'm going to leave it on the video that I made the mistake, okay, that I did make the mistake, and I picked up my Bible, and went to look for it to fix my problem, and now I can't fix my problem. But let's stick with John 14 and 6. And the way the truth and the life no man come into the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, 7, ye should have known my Father also from henceforth. Ye know him and have seen him. So I made a mistake. Let me go and get something so I can fix it while I'm talking to y'all. Okay, I'm back. Let this thing charge up. And then, 
I'm going to fix my problem. But I did make this mistake, and I am just sorry about it. But then, I'm actually, a part of me is very glad that I made the mistake. And then I can own up to the fact that I did make a mistake. But I'm sitting right here with y'all and fix it. That way, when you be like, she did, she did, ooh, look what she did. But Pastor made a mistake this morning, and Pastor gonna fix it. It's a right now. Oh, give thanks, time to charge up. But anyway, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you that I am able to fix a mistake that I made without worrying. Let me see if I charge all came all the way up. But I'm still loading. And I can fix it. See, I, I should have written down, but I didn't write nothing down. I really didn't. So let me do this. All right. Let me fix this. Sorry about the silence. Okay. Okay, so it's John six thirty five. Okay. Let me go to John six thirty five because that was totally misquoted because you shouldn't quote anything you're taught unless you actually go back and write it down. And I didn't write nothing down. I just thought, open up my mouth, talk. Okay. Now, here he is. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is John 6, 35. Okay. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that come to me should never hunger and thirst that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, 36, that ye also have seen me and believe not, 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out, 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he had given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall rise it up again at the last day. 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one would see it, the Son, and believe it on him may have everlasting life, and I will rise, raise him up at the last day. Thank you, Jesus, for that correction. That means I must have quoted on another time, too. And, and thank God that um, you guys are patient. And so I really thank God that the Holy Ghost is patient. And I was glad I made that mistake. You know, that I was able to go ahead and fix that mistake because I had to grab my tablet real quick and fix it. I thank God for being able to fix it, you know. But I was like, you know, y'all go ahead and, 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 and get a girl right now. <laughs> it's okay, you know. But um, I'm not going to say I'm okay, you're okay. I don't remember that situation. But I do know if you read your scripture every day, because I'm reading Chronicles right now. That is what I am reading straight up. I'm reading Chronicles. And I'm in the book of Second Chronicles, and I'm at uh, I did, I did the city's building, because I went backwards. I did Queen Sheba. I am at 
when Solomon's son take over in chapter 10. So lately you all been hearing me talk about the Old Testament a lot. I ain't forgot about the New Testament. I love the New Testament. I told y'all all I had was Psalms 23 and John 14 until I met Richard Daniel Hinton when he was an elder. And that's when I got more scripture and I started reading my Bible because I was having trouble reading it. And um, everything was spoken to me. Um, so I had one teacher I really didn't like, but it was my mom's teacher. And it was Helena Stone. And some of the things she said was true about the Bible. Um, but then she was operating in the Coptic church. Um, but that was like spoken, 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 spoken. You know, and so for me, hearing things that I've spoken sometimes, it kind of threw me off because it was happening to me when I was a kid. So now, as um, a minister, I do have to read my scripture. So I'm back in the Old Testament reading it. I mean, really reading it. So I made the mistake this morning, and as I said, a mason told me something. And... It was John 3.16 he told me. Hold on, let me go back. Let me let me grab John 3.16 and read this to make sure I'm not really tweaking. Here it is. John 3.16. Thank you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So those who want to give their life to the Lord uh, today, they can. And I'm glad that that scripture came back to mind and that I was able to pick up another part of John or St. John in some Bibles. An older Bible might say St. John, and it may read a little differently, but... I was glad to pick up um, John 6, verses 35 to 40, and go back and get John 3.16. Amen. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, and thank you for correcting me this morning, because I made some mistakes. And I'm glad that um, I did make them, and that I was able to correct them, and that... Um, God's word be true, and every man be a liar. You know, and for you people that run around on the internet dragging people out about the scripture, you just seen Pastor Cynthia make one, and you just saw me fix it. And I didn't let y'all go. I'm sorry to walk away like that, but to go do that. So if someone would like to give their life to the Lord, now it's a good time to do so. Now you see what mistake we can make? Mm -hmm. So it can't be no big headed Christian. <laughs> okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit, the comforter, the teacher, the lead, and the guide. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen.